Welcome to day eight of our program. So yesterday we looked at addition and removal of the liquidity. And today we're going to look at what is the percent concentration of liquidity sources for the pair USDC and wrapped ETH. So basically looking at how much is owned by whom. And now I will hand it over to Andrew to walk you through the query. So here we go into the query. So I'm just going to outline things real quick. Yesterday, we looked at the total liquidity in a pool by checking essentially the total supply, right? And total supply was just what was the total amount minted minus the total amount that was burned. Um, meaning when a token is minted, it's transferred from the zero address to someone. When it's burned, it's transferred to the zero address. Um, so today we're going to look at the diversity of sources that are providing liquidity. Right. So it could just be one person providing all of the liquidity. It could be a thousand. It could be 10,000. Um, if you just look at total liquidity or total supply, you have no idea um, how diverse the providers are. Right. And this is important because if it's just one person holding all the liquidity, what if they remove the liquidity? Suddenly no one can trade through that pool. Right. Uh, so that can be dangerous and that'll lead to a lot of adverse effects we'll talk about in future queries. Um, but to know who is holding what query, we essentially have to look at the event transfer. Um, so our ERC-20 tokens implement this transfer event, um, and they all have the same topic signature as well. If you aren't familiar with the topic signature, it's just literally topic one in the logs table. Um, it's like DDF something, something like that. Uh, we'll take a look at that as an example later. So we could take each pair like we could get pair address um and then check for the transfer event on the pair all right so we could do oop, this is the wrong engine so if i search up uniswap v2 and i go to the decoded contract i go to the pair i will see if i filter by event there's a transfer event right so i could use this event select all from let's do a limit 10 so if I look at this and I look at this hash go to ether scan type this in um, you'll see there's like a bunch of like supplied swapped whatever uh, and if I go to logs you can see there's a transfer event and the contract address was this one so i'm going to look for a transfer event from this contract address so this is sync this is swap there should be a transfer so this is a transfer and you'll see as a topic here this is the same topic for all transfer events like if i search it here there's like eight or nine different transfer events that come from different contracts right um again i only care about this one there's some value transferred from there's some value transferred to right it looks exactly the same as the mint event because the mint and burn events are actually also transfer events um like that should make sense to you because you're transferring from zero to something or transferring from something to zero address so it's just a transfer event uh we could use this table um but instead i'm going to actually teach you to use the more generalized version um, the performance is maybe a tiny bit slower, but this is a, a very important table for you to get used to using. So we're going to show you the ERC-20 table. So you'll see there's ERC-20 and there's all of these different events and like all of these chains, right? So I want the ERC-20 table for Ethereum. And so now, uh, what I can do is say, all right. I want this Ethereum transfer event where the contract address that emitted this was the USDC uh, WETH pair, All right? So here, let me do it with a parameter and copy this again. All right. So I can do this, run it with the parameter. And you'll see it still runs really quick. These are the transfer events for USDC um, with pair, 
uh, as the LP token, right? So if we take the pair address filtered on pair address, we can now take it a step further and say, all right, get me, get all transfers from and to for us for all addresses of holders and then essentially if you sum over time you can get their current balance and then after we have the current balance we just need to divide current balance by total supply right but we don't need to calculate total supply separately because sum of all balances should equal total supply. All right, so let's dive into it. I'm gonna start with a CTE with um, transfers out or transfers in. Let's start with this. I'm gonna copy this in here. So I want the to alias this by TR, just as easier types. I want the transats the transfer um two as holder and then i want the sum of value as received and let's just group by one and let's ignore um and from not equal to zero or two not equal to zero right so in this case we're trans checking all transfers in uh to addresses that are not zero right because we don't care about the balance of the zero address um because those tokens are burned right so if i just run this part All right, we need a cast. All right, it loaded, and I can see that there's some amount received by this person, and this person is, there's a Uniswap contract for staking rewards. Um, We'll get into that later, but that does mean there's some address here that says, okay, the tokens are held in staking. So we're going to now do the transfers out. And I want now the transfers from an address where I don't care about the zero address so now this is saying all right how much did one person transfer out from their address and lastly i want the net balance as so i'm going to take select select all from um, transfers in tn and then now let's left join transfers out T out. Uh, let's do this. And now I can say TN dot holder. And then I want the amount received. I need to change this to sent up here. Amount received minus amount sent as balance. Uh, however, they might not have sent anything out. So I have to coalesce this and say, if they didn't send anything out, replace with zero. Otherwise their balance is gonna show up as null because you can't subtract null in SQL. Cool, so I have net balances here and because I already group by and have the sums here, I don't need a group by down here. So now that we have this, we can also left join, oh, actually, so earlier we didn't divide by decimals because um, I was going to join to the tokens table later, but all ETH or all Uniswap pairs um, 
for V2. Let me just pull it up here. Which one was it earlier? This one? Yeah, all Uniswap V2 pairs use 18 decimals. So I can just divide by 1E18 in this case for both of these. And then I'm just going to select all from net balance. Oh, I didn't say join on. On T in dot holder equals T out dot holder because this is what I want to join the columns on. All right, so let's see. You see, I'm filtering my balance. You're going to see there's some negatives at the 12th decimal. We're going to revisit that. Um, but here, the total balance, the highest holder is holding 0 0.089 of the pool. Let me just check an ether scan. This is correct. Yeah, there's 0 0.089 of the pool worth $14 million. Um, so for the negative values, um, they're rounding errors. So to deal with the rounding errors, we're going to add a where statement. So I'm going to say where... Uh, this balance calculation here is greater than zero. And now we're also going to get the total supply. So total supply as this is just select sum balance from net balance. So all together, we can get from net balance that we can get the holder um, and then we can also get the balance and now we can also get balance divided by select total balance total balance from total supply as percent liquidity held Cool. So now I can see if I order by balance here, this person is holding almost 15.5-16% of total liquidity. Let me just use a pie chart to show this off. Let's do percent liquidity held. Uh, let's show data labels. And I'm not going to show the chart legend. Pie chart held. So I can kind of see, all right. Let me add a format here, 0.00%. You can kind of get a quick summary of things. Um, it's obviously better to show the number of, like, it's obviously better to show this as a histogram and we'll come back to that later. Um, in our case now, the last thing to do is, since we know we're gonna cluster things at the end for the last day, we want to try and generalize things as soon as possible so i'm going to have contract address as pair here we're going to group by i'm going to add it again here group by and then here we're also going to have tn.pair um and we're going to left join on both the holder and the pair, right? And for the total supply, we need the pair and the sum of balance by pair. So we're gonna group by one here. And lastly here, now we're gonna join by total supply instead of selecting by it. So then we can just do total supply that total balance. And we want to have pair as one of the variables here. And if we run this in order by percent liquidity held descending, we should get the same results. Pair is ambiguous because we joined it. Oh, typo. Cool, our data loaded. Let's make this bigger. And we can see the data is still the same. So we didn't mess anything up, which is always nice to see. Um, before I leave you, I'm going to add something in here just for fun. You will have already seen us do this before. 
but we're going to use the creation traces table on join it to the holders because I want to add a case when there is a creation trace, then this is a contract. Else it's a EOA wallet and as address or holder type. Now you're gonna remember that earlier we saw that, oh, one of the people or addresses holding the balance was a contract. It was a staking rewards contract. Um, this is actually pretty common that for LPs in pairs, um, they have incentivized liquidity where if you put liquidity in a pair and you get this ERC-20 token representing your liquidity, you can then put it in another contract, basically proving, saying, hey, I did put my liquidity in and it's worth this much. And that contract will give you rewards for essentially providing liquidity to the pool. Um, this is referred to as yield farming in some sense, just as staking in some sense. Um, it's very common for like bootstrapping liquidity in pools in general. And there's whole protocols built off of this staking rewards incentive structure. Um, it's kind of a deep rabbit hole, but this is a f category we might want to have for later when we're analyzing across pairs, because if there's a high percent of liquidity in an address versus a high percent of liquidity in a wall, in a contract, um, so yeah, we want this later because if there's a high percentage of liquidity in a wallet versus inside of a contract, there's different kind of stickiness assumptions there. Um, so let's create another pie chart and this time let's have it by holder type and percent of liquidity held show data labels um held holder type and you'll see here if we do a 0.0 percent 21 percent of liquidity is held in contracts 80 percent of it is held in wallets um the top holder, it looks like it's, nope, that was the pair. Looks like it's this one, which you might already recognize that address if you're paying attention, is the staking rewards contract um, deployed by Uniswap. So that's a rabbit hole to look into. But with that, we are done with the query for day eight. Thank you, Andrew. Quality walkthrough per usual. So for bonus question today, can you make the results a histogram instead? Tomorrow, we're going to pick up on intermediate level. We're going to look at what percent of liquidity of each token is in this pair versus others. So for example, if you have 10 USDC pairs, what percent of total USDC liquidity is in this USDC and wrapped ETH pair? All right, see you tomorrow.